Happy birthday, baby. What do you think of your new boat? I'll tell you, and I actually stepped foot on it. Looks a little small. You know I got that. The past few months has been a dark time. Molly, what are you doing in here? Haley, in our bedroom? I can explain. Was she even born when we graduated college? Actually, she was one. Oh! Molly? I want a divorce. The fame and the life is right. You never think stuff like this is gonna happen to you. But I'm much better now. <laughs> Hello? Molly Novak, I'm the executive director of your foundation. Wait, what? I was wondering if you wouldn't mind coming into the office tomorrow. I have an office? No. Molly, come in here, girl. We're not used to meeting celebrities. I'm not a celebrity. <laughs> yes, you are. You're like the most famous cheated on woman on the planet. <laughs> Let's be honest, you only showed up today because you got divorced. I never did the work to find out who I am. It's really, really scary. I'm sorry, I don't really care about any of that. Wow, when I said that to Oprah, she gave me one of the biggest hugs. What do you think about Molly's foundation? It's a bit more complicated than organizing a cocktail party. I need to prove I have substance. Nice I'm to meet you. Meet you, Nikai. So, um, for both of you guys, whoever wants to go first. Um, there are plenty of underserved communities in LA. Um, what do you feel or what would you like to personally see done to make a change? Um, if I could start, just at a local level, there's just a couple of places that I enjoy working with uh, in my off time, like uh, this place called School on Wheels, when they help um, at-risk and homeless children um, basically finding education options, find after school programs, a safe place to be where they can kind of to learn that like your circumstances can be temporary and just because you're broke or don't have access to funds at a certain time does not mean that you are necessarily poor and poor in spirit or poor in education that you can find a way out of that. And I just think right now we're at a time where there is um so many people looking out for taking care of themselves, for hoarding things, for protecting themselves, and, and rightfully so with the pandemic. But I think to, in order just for people to remember that w in the best of times, people are at need. And then when there's worse situations and things that happen, those are the people we need to continue to turn to and to continue to look out for. Um, so just more continued empathy and continue um, local work. If, if there's places in your hometown food kitchens that you can donate, just to never think that the problem is so big because it, it can seem overwhelming and that you can't do anything, but just being involved in things, just like sometimes just showing up at this place and showing these kids that like, hey, I also didn't come from great circumstances and I use education and I use my natural talents and I use my skills and I use my determination to get out of those situations. And that is something that is free to share with people. And I think that yeah. if we can just remember that, that would be helpful to me. Wow, well said, Ron. I feel like yeah. nervous to follow that answer. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I would echo all of what Ron said. I think doing, you know, even a little bit is better than doing nothing. So for people to be more proactive, I recently went to my daughter's school and they had this sort of passion project. And one of the kids that I was talking to said he went out to all the you know homeless um shelters and the people lining the streets and he just made a piece of paper with all the resources that were close to them like on a map and just said like these are all the things that are very close to you if you need them and he said the response was like phenomenal he said all the you know people that were living on the streets were like this is so helpful i you know i don't know where to go for certain things and like yeah. and this was like a you know eighth grade kid that was making a difference and it was just a nice reminder to um that the little things like that can go a long way i think in our communities right well i believe both of you have you know great points and shared some great resources um, so being what people would consider, you know, the 1%, um, do you guys feel that it is an obligation once you get to a certain stature to give back and help people? 
Well, personally, I believe it's my obligation to give back at whatever position I'm in. And it's just the more resources I have, the more I'm able to give back. And uh, one of my favorite things in the world is being able to link up with uh, corporations or have access to people with more money than me so I can spend their money. That's what I usually prefer. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> right. But yes, but the short answer to your question is yes. Yes, I I agree. I mean, I it's I don't think you necessarily need to be 1%, you know, in the 1% to make a difference and be a positive change maker and role model for people out there. So certainly um, maybe there's more onus on people that have a lot of money to give back. Um, right. But that doesn't necessarily mean if you, you know, I it shouldn't discourage people that don't have money to do. It's, it's like I said, I feel like every little thing helps. Well, I appreciate your time so much. I hope you guys both have a blessed day. You too. Thank you. You too.